continue until we finish. Now I pray for you. Can you just raise your hands where you are seated? Our Father, we thank you this day. We bless you that you are a good God, you are a mighty God, you are a wonderful Father. Indeed, like our sister said, we are your firstborn sons. And because of your firstborn sons, Lord, we are redeemed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The curse of the law has no place in our lives. And so, Father, we receive deliverance from every hindrance. Yes, Lord. That is causing us to slow down in our walk with you. Lord, I pray that as a people and as individuals, we will manifest. We will manifest to our generation. That it will be said about us that we served our generation. Fully, completely doing the will of God. Yes, Lord. And so we pray, Father, that with everyone here, you will visit our personal issues, yes, the things Lord. that trouble us, Hallelujah. the things that make us feel pain, yes, Lord. the things that bring fear to us, the yes, things that Lord. oppress us. Yes, Lord. We pray, O oh God, mm. that it shall be like First Corinthians, Second Corinthians 2.14 says, Thanks be unto God that always give us victory through Hallelujah. our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Lord, I declare victory for your people. I yes. declare victory in every struggle. In I pray, I declare breakthrough yes, in Lord. every area. Yes, we pray, Lord. Father, that sicknesses will melt. We are not under the curse of the law, but Hallelujah. Jesus redeemed Hallelujah. us from the curse of Hallelujah. the law. According to Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, yes, he became a curse for us that we may be free. I declare freedom over you. I break name. those headaches. Yes, I destroy Lord. those migraines. Hallelujah. I destroy those stiff muscles yes, that are caused by anxiety and stress. Oh, yes, In the Lord. mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah. I free your muscles from an overload of hormones in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Lord, we speak even financial breakthrough. Baba to move forward. Yes, Bless Abanabaha, who blesses South Africa. Yes, Lord. Ria Rapela Galibitola Jesu Christ. Yes, Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Let's give Jesus a mighty hand of appreciation. Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. We are continuing to talk about aggressive kingdom advancement. And so we are at the almost one of the last stations for, of formation. The children of Israel were in a place called Rephidim. The meaning of which is places of rest. Which tells us that we when in, in our walk with God, we must operate from a position of rest. Now, look at this. In Rephidim, they did not have water, but because they were led by a man who understood how to rest 
in God. God caused water to come out of a rock. You see, when we operate in that rest, what is the rest? It's exactly what our sister was saying. It's a place of faith where we understand that it is not by might nor by power. We rest in him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He is our rest. He becomes our Sabbath. The Sabbath is not a day. It is a person. Because the Sabbath was a day of rest originally. But we no more find our rest in a day, we find our rest in a person. He is the one whom we do not have when we know we operate from his vantage point. We rest. And the water comes out of the rock. May the water come out of your rock. That hard, impossible looking place. May your miracle come right out of that place. And then we see they fought. That's the second thing. But they fought from a position of rest. Are you hearing what I'm trying to communicate here? When, 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 what makes us see that they fought from a position of rest? It's because Moses went on top of the mountain. And he had the rod. And he used that authority and grace to call upon the one in whom they are resting. When you war from a position of rest, you will always overcome. Paul says in Colossians 1 verse 3, not three, verse one, one, verse three. He says, We give thanks to the Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praying always for you. Paul had a he, he knew, he felt that responsibility of praying for everyone whom God had brought under his grace. Look at verse 4. Look at what he says. In verse 4 he says, Since we heard of your faith, in Christ Jesus and of your love for all saints. And then let's jump to verse 8. In verse 8, Paul says, he talks about a man by the name of Epaphras. It says, who also declared to us your love in the spirit? Verse 9. For this reason, we also since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will 
in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Re kopa gore le tladiwe ka kitso ya thata ya ona ka mothale jotlhe le motemogontseditswa mo mowe. Right here we can see the place of prayer in leadership and the place of prayer among the saints. Mo re khona go bona lefelo la go rapela magareng ga ba etapele le mogareng ga ba yena. You see one of the responsibilities of leadership like let's say myself is to administer the grace of God. Yeah. It is to administer the grace of God in the house. What is this administration of grace? It is being able to create environments in which the grace of God will be able to reach God's people. But also to teach people. But also to pray for them. So, pray for me. Praying for you is an administration of grace. It's a responsibility. And therefore you have to see that when we also pray for one another, we are administering the grace of God. Sorry, guys. The third thing happened when they were in Rephidim. And it was a visit from the father-in-law of Moses. By the name of Jethro. Now, please, I, I want us to go through a Bible study and, and then we will do some application as we go. Jethro, Jethro is called in the Bible a priest of Midian. Now, scholars of the scriptures tell us that actually Jethro is a descendant of Abraham through a woman by the name of Keturah. How many people remember Keturah? <laughs> Keturah is the woman that Abraham married after Sarah died. One of the sons that Keturah gave Abraham was a, a man by the name of Midian. Keturah was an Ethiopian woman. Ethiopian, Ethiopian. Yes. And Jethro as a Midianite, it means that his ancestry can be traced back to Abraham. Now, in the history of Moses, when Moses killed an Egyptian, you remember that? And then Pharaoh knew. What did Moses do? He ate down. Again. Then when he fled, where did he go? He went to Midian. He was 40 years old. We're doing Bible study here. He was 40 years old. When he got to Midian, he met some girls who had brought their flock for water. There was always a fight as to 
whose flock is going to drink water first. So when Moses saw them being, you know, ill-treated, he helped them and then they got their flock to drink quickly and went home quicker. The father was surprised. Why are you back so early? They said an Egyptian helped us. And the father said, why didn't you invite him to come home? And so that is how Moses came to Jethro's house. Now listen, Bazalwan. Jethro, the Bible says, was a priest. In other words, a priest of God in Media. Where did he get to know God? How did he get to know this God and serve him in Midian? It's because he knew the God of his great-great-grandfather. It is Abraham, generationally, who taught him about the Almighty God. Moses only heard about this God. Because he thought he was going to deliver his people and then he made a big boo-boo. Forty years Moses spent in Midian with Jethro. What happened in that 40 years? Jethro fathered him. And the Bible tells us in Exodus that one day, Moses, as he was shepherding, <laughs> in other words, God used Jethro to ring out, to ring out the, the mentality of the Egyptian palace out of him and turned him into a shepherd because he was supposed to shepherd God's people. And so Jethro actually introduced Moses to the God of his fathers. When Moses was on the mountain with his flock, then he sees a burning bush, which means that mountain was not far from where Moses lived. The possibilities are Jethro could have been on that mountain too. By the time God finished with Moses and Moses was going back, Moses had met the God of his fathers being fathered by Jethro. So when Jethro came in Rephidim, and Moses, I want, I'm going to tell you about three things that Moses did that when he met his father-in-law. Moses, when they met, he told them the whole story of about Egypt and what happened. Summarizing it first. Then Jethro took a burnt offering to offer to God to give thanks for him. 
But let me tell you the three things that Moses did when he met Jethro. Number one, Moses welcomed Jethro with humility. The Bible says he bowed down before him. Do you know Moses at this point was greater than Jethro? In terms of his accomplishments, in terms of his size of ministry, quote-unquote, he was greater than Jethro. But Moses did not count his success as something that would give him an attitude towards Jethro. Listen, Bazalwan. Being greater than your father does not mean you must now start looking down on them. Even in life, in real life, I can tell you, even myself, I handled more money than my parents. I've driven better cars than my parents. A lot of things I've done better than my parents. But that did not stop me from honoring them. Amen. There is nothing that I used to love. With my parents. Better than when our, we would visit them. And we'll bring them a little something. Because I knew something was going to come out of their mouth. They were going to release a blessing over our lives. You know, sometimes parents, they become so old that you don't even know what to buy them because it seems like the things that are important to us today, they are no more practical to them. You know, you can, you, can, you can buy them a cell phone, they are going to say, Kislo man say. and they will ask, what is this? You would have rather bought them Lepopotani than to buy them an expensive you would, smartphone. You would buy Ukampano Barekele this small phone instead of a smartphone. But whatever you buy for them, you must be clever. Amen. And know that when you do that, you are tapping words of blessing to flow out of their mouth. I want to say this to you. And I'm saying it very honestly. In many ways, many of you, you'll be greater than us. In many areas, you're going to be greater than us. Don't lose your respect. Amen. Don't forget the days where there was nothing. And you got carried by the prayers, the advices, the love, the patience, the fathering. Let me, let me put this in Sitswana. Let me put it in Sitswana. I'm not talking for myself. I'm talking God order. <laughs> Moses saw Jethro 
Moshe abona Jethro. And he bowed before Jethro. In respect. Because when Moses came from Midian. Running from Pharaoh. It's Jethro who received him. It's Jethro who gave him uh, his daughter. It's Jethro who trained him. Now he is greater than Jethro. Now he is leading a nation. But Moses never forgot the place where the grace began. Number two, that Moses did. When Moses was sitting with Jethro, Moses shared with Jethro the successes and the hardships. Yeah. M Moses Moshe. gave Jethro Moses Moshe. gave Jethro, Anela Jethro the strong hand and the withered hand. Amen. Can I tell you something? You have to learn to be open to your leaders. Give them the good things, but also give them the struggles. I wish I was there just among you and be one of you. And maybe while about on come near the camera, but I know what is needed. Eh, leba camera they will shout at me. There is no point in trying to impress a leader. Ha ho tlhoka ga le gore wena o khatle mo etapele. When I ask you. Ha ke go botsa. When they ask you. Ha ba go botsa. How are you? They want to know everything. So that when they speak, they will, you will be a better person. When they pray, they will know what to pray about. Amen. But if every time you speak, it stars and Woo! God is good. Hey, mudi mulukile. All the time. Kana kotsotle. All the time, God is good. Kana kotsotle. Hey, mudi mulukile. Huh? Hey. Zala di gay mi friends abiao, because that's not why we relate. Hey. We relate to build. Rama na kure reache. We relate. Rama na kure. To make you better. Kuruwe na unnebo toga, amen. We relate Ramana. to lift you to the next level God wants you. So when we talk, for you to tell us the things that may appear to be negative is not to be weak. Is to be wise. Hallelujah. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not to be weak when you share your challenges with your leaders. Amen. I can almost read somebody's mind right now. Dollar, you tell them. And then the next thing I'm going to hear hey. it on the pulpit. Or I will hear they well, speak about it. On that score, it's a warning to leaders. Leaders, when you are told people's problems, people's home, you know, situations and so on, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. I didn't say it, but she heard it. Amen. 
Moses told Jethro everything that was good and everything that did not go right. And the third thing Moses did. When Jethro sat down and looked at how Moses does things. Somebody say, I'm listening. When Jethro sat down and looked at how Moses is doing things. Jethro realized he will not last. Because he's doing everything himself. And so Jethro said, Moses, let me show you how to do this. You know what I'm talking about again. And the Bible tells us that Moses listened to Jethro. He took Jethro's advice and he did what Jethro said. Moses did not say, God speaks to me. Unless God says it, I will not do it. God will not tell you everything he wants to say to you directly. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Not everything that God wants to say to you, he will say spirit to spirit. He will use people. And he will lose leaders. We must not despise relationships. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 18 verse 19. He says, listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel. And God will be with you. Listen to what Jethro says in, verse, in the next verse. Verse 19 still. He says, stand before God for the people so that you may bring the, difficult, the, the difficulties to God. And verse 20, and you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. Then he tells him to select men who will lead. Verse 24 says, So Moses heeded the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Amen. You must be wise enough to hear where the voice of the Lord will come. So, if a leader picks up a phone and begins to show you a few things, be able to say, I'm hearing from God. You know, God uses a husband to speak to a wife and God uses a wife to speak to a husband. Because I'm laughing because as husbands, we don't think God can use our wives to speak to us. Because because 
It can be mudi mudi ma bulelebe. No, God does not speak like that. Mudi ma bulelebe. God does not speak like that. You tell your neighbor you must be a discerning man. If your neighbor is a man, tell them you must be a discerning man. <laughs> Amen. Okay, Bazana, let's move on. So, in the process of forming them for advancement, we see, therefore, in Rephidim that they had to learn to operate from a position of rest. Tell your neighbor position of rest. Where it is not by might nor by power. In other words, position of rest means you are not controlled by your circumstances. You fight, but you know you will win. And number three, we embrace counsel. When they finished in Rephidim, they went to two other places. I'll talk about them next week, but they went to two other places. And then the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. It says, in the third month, after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. Let's read verse 2. Listen. For they had departed from Rephidim, had come to the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. Which mountain did they encamp at? It was the mountain of Sinai. What mountain is this? Listen carefully now. This is the same place God met Moses and said, I am sending you to Egypt to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. It's the same mountain that God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. God took him on a circle. Because God said in Exodus chapter 3 verse 12. Exodus 3 12. So he said. I will be with you. And this shall be a sign to you. That I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. So when Moses went to Pharaoh and said, Thus saith the Lord. Let my people go. That they may go into the wilderness. And serve me. He was talking about this mountain. So it was a familiar place to Moses. This is where he met God. On this mountain, Israel spent one full year. Now I'm just going to mention things 
and, and mention them generally, but we'll get into their specifics. I want you to see, therefore, the three stages that God took Israel through before they qualify to take the promised land. Number one, God had to deliver them from Egypt. And if you remember where, I told you, you can never form, I mean, serve God from Egypt. Amen. You cannot be in the world controlled by the world. The Bible says they came out of Ramesses. Which means son of the sun, S-U-N. If you are going to do exploits, you must be free from any worldly bondage. So that what you do and how you do it, even though you use the resources that are on earth, you do it the kingdom way. You don't follow the principles of the world when to I, achieve kingdom results. Amen. I have to tell you this because uh, it's, it, it fits here. You know, yesterday, where, where Mama Joy went, I don't know, you know, so, some of you, you need to understand how, how my wife operates. When she sees something, she goes there. So she meets this queen online, online. And she discovers, you know, we have something in common. And then she says, And she said, I'm coming. I want to join the meeting that they were having. She, she explained <laughs> everything. So there were many people there. But this queen <laughs> is born again. Hallelujah. is not a queen in the sense that there is a king. She is the king queen. I don't know how to call it. Yes. Amen. And yesterday she spent an hour telling me what she saw. She said, I've never seen something like that. Where a whole occasion that is supposed to be traditional is done under the banner of the name of Jesus Christ without compromise. Jesus was lifted up as the Lord, as the King. There were pastors who were making declarations I mean, and when I thought about what this is, I saw that this is aggressive kingdom advancement. Amen. Where when God gives you a position, you do not fall to the way we know things are supposed to be made. When God gives you authority, use it for the king. God. Don't be afraid. Who will say what? Use it for the kingdom. 
Jesus Christ was was exalted. There were pastors. There was prayer. There was prophecy. But it was a cultural, traditional thing. Why? Because the queen knew. I am not here just because of my lineage with my parents. I am on a kingdom assignment. Therefore, I am going to stand for kingdom principles. That is kingdom advancement. You get what I'm saying? You do not fall under the control of Egypt. But you stand for the Lord. You know, when you listen to the words of Paul in the scriptures, when Paul was falsely arrested, and he was brought before governors and kings, which was what God said to him. But he didn't tell him you, that would happen when you were falsely accused. When Paul gave his side of the story, Paul spoke so clear about the Lord Jesus that one of those kings was actually scared. And he asked him, do you believe in the resurrection? And the man said, you think you'll make me a Christian? But the fact remains, Paul stood for his faith. That was stage one. God took them out of Egypt. Number two, I hope by now you have seen that God is formatting them. He's forming them. You come out of Egypt and you allow God to form you. In other words, some of the experiences we go through now are a process of God forming us. You can never tell how great God wants you you to do in terms of his kingdom, especially if you look at what you are going through today. Hard things. Difficulties. Challenges that come against you. Our Matomo Joseph did go through <laughs> you that. You are not the first one. Joseph went through that. Beloved, Bayen. please say I'm listening. Utwang, I need this thing to be here. Here. That when you encounter, you remember. Do you hear what I'm saying? When you encounter, you remember, I am on my way for advancement of the kingdom aggressively. In Sinai, Okay, I said the first thing is God took them out of Egypt. Step two, God formed them. And then step three, they had to take the land. It 
It is here in Sinai. Number one. Where God spoke to them. In a way they've never heard him. Number two, God gave them his commandments. Number three, God came down from the mountain to live among them through a tabernacle. Number four, God arranged them around the tabernacle. Number five, God gave them a law. Now, this is what God said to them. In Exodus chapter 19 verse 3, I want you to hear the things God is saying. You know, I don't know. Sometimes when I prepare here, I'm saying, now God get off a song. There are so many life. Uh, uh, what is this? Teachings here. Exodus 19.3. Exodus 19. First thing God tells them as they come to that mountain. In verse 3 it says, And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him from the mountain saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wing and brought you to myself. What is God saying? He's saying, remember where I took you from. Never ever in your life forget where God took you from. Amen. It may be 20 years ago. It may be 30 years ago. For me, probably 40 or over 40 years ago. I was saved as an 18-year-old boy. I had not done much of what people say is being worldly. I was a young virgin boy. But I don't forget where he took me from. Amen. Because Everyone who does not know Jesus. No, let me put it correctly. Everyone who comes to know Jesus is found at a place. And that place must always make you say, Lord, thank you for saving my soul. Lord, thank you that I am born again. Lord, thank you that I am your son. Lord, thank you that you have forgiven me my sin. Never despise your day of salvation. You know, people sometimes go through so much in their lives that they end up saying, what's the use of being born again? Look at all the things that are happening. I was better off in the world. You're wrong. 
You are wrong. You are better off now in Christ. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because he says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And it is all because of that day he became your Lord and Savior. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for saving my soul. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Your salvation is the love of God. And God says to Israel, you have seen what I did. I took you out of Egypt. You have seen how I dealt with Egypt. I bore you on eagle's wings. I brought you to myself. That's the first one. Number two, in, in verse five, God says, now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, somebody say to your neighbor, I'll obey his voice, and keep my covenant, Somebody say, keep his covenant. Then you shall be a special treasure to me. Above all people. For all the earth is mine. Somebody say, I hear you, Lord. After he takes us out, he wants us to obey. And when we obey, the Bible says you become a treasure. I want you to think about the things you love that are that you own. Things that are expensive that you own. Things that are of value and worth that are special to you that you own. Now I want to ask you a question. Where do you put them? You put them just anywhere? Never. Anything that is special anything that is a treasure you take good care of it amen am i talking to anyone you 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 protect it by all you can you have a special storage for it and if you are to use it you use it only in special time because it obeys you it obeys you because it gives you pleasure you love it so you don't treat it ordinarily so god says when you obey me you become a treasure you become a treasure. You know, a treasure is something you protect. Sometimes you'll put a cupboard somewhere and lock it up in a safe. It's a treasure. Somebody say, I'm God's special treasure. When we obey him, let me tell you something about obedience. Obedience keeps our relationship with God healthy. And obedience keeps our faith vibrant. And here's the, th the last thing as I close. In verse 6, 
and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. What does that mean? When he says you are a kingdom of priests. Priests. Now hear this one. Priests are the people who stand between God and and men. They are the ones who help men know God and open a portal for God to reach men. What was God saying? He was saying, I will, you will be a special treasure to me and you will become a blessing to mankind. Amen. You will be a blessing to your generation. What does the Bible say about us? It says we are kings and priests. Right here where God says you shall be priests is where we find kingdom advancement. So as we, we, we kept it today, I want to say this to you. Do not let your days and years of formation go to waste. How do they go to waste? It is when we give up before we reach no matter what you are going through or what it is called don't give up don't give in keep saying I am a son of God and God is my father. Amen. You know, one day God must help us to go and interrogate the subject of sonship. I'm not sure if the people of God fully understand what it means to be a son of God. I'm still learning to be a son of God. Not just learning to live, but to understand what it means to be a son of God. Because this is the key to accessing all the grace we need. Amen, brother Lord. Amen. And so as God is forming us, as we are going through a season of being formed, as we have taught, take heart. The Lord has not forgotten about you. And he will never forget about you. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that you are more than enough. Yes, Lord. You are the Alpha and Omega. Yes, Lord. The Alpha of our faith and the Omega of our faith. Today, Lord, we stand before you Lord. And we want to say thank you for saving us. Yes, Lord. 
Thank you for giving Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice for our lives. We thank you that in Christ and through Christ, with our eyes on him, we shall not fail. We shall not fail. We shall not fail. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We shall not fail. In Jesus' name. We shall not fail. Yes, Lord. Because you are more than enough. Yes, Lord. We pray that the things that we are hearing here, Lord, mm. in all these 12, 13, 14 weeks, yes, Lord, we will take to heart in Jesus name. and inculcate them mm. and understand that you, Father, you mold us in your own special way. Yes, Lord. For we live in the days of acceleration. Mm. When the things promised will now begin to unfold. And we pray in the name of Jesus that our eyes will be opened. Yes, Lord. And we will see at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Father saying, well done. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Good and faithful servant. Yes, Lord. We pray for those, Lord, that have put down the race, who have backslidden, who don't even come to church anymore. Bring them back, Father. Yes, Lord. Restore them, Father. Hallelujah. Those who misunderstood the process of formation, mm. bring them back, Lord. We pray that you will uproot them from the darkness they find themselves in. Those, Lord, that have decided to go back to Egypt, take Egypt out of them. Yes, Lord. And let them return to you, Father. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Those that have felt disappointed, mm. reappoint them, Lord, in the ministry. Yes, Lord. Appoint them again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord.